Hello, my name is Stephen Knight and our topic today is exploring Office 365 bookings. The Bookings app is a new feature that allows clients to make bookings for a service on an online calendar. They can pick the day from our available days, they can pick uh, a service from a range of services and if they have a preference they can choose a particular staff member. So, can I ask for a show of hands, how many of you listening or watching this tutorial have a calendar that contains booking scheduled events where effectively that drives your week, is you exist to provide services for internal or external clients and the calendar is giving you your program for the day, the week, the month. Now, I'm a trainer, so I'm one of the people that just put my hand up. My calendar gives me the structure of my week. It's full of bookings for training courses and seminars and sessions. So for other types of businesses, though, where would it be useful to have an online calendar where clients can make direct bookings? Now, I can think of a couple of examples here, which I'm going to bring up on this slide in a moment. But if you can see examples of where uh, people can use an online calendar in their business, I'll get you to put some comments in the comments below. If you want to try these exercises yourself, you'll need an Office 365 account with the Bookings app. Uh, the Bookings app's being rolled out gradually, and it may be a while before you get it. Also, it's for the business premium level of Office 365. I'm not sure about other levels. And you need a modern web browser. I'm using Edge, but I've also used this tool with Chrome. The main thing here, folks, is I'm emphasizing modern web browser. If your organization's using Internet Explorer 6 or Internet Explorer 8, you're going to have issues, well, with Office 365 generally, not just this particular app. So we're going to explore bookings in two stages. We're going to set up the calendar as the owner, and then we're going to make a booking as a client. So we'll see the process from both stages. When we make the booking as the client, we'll see emails and things that get generated as well. Going to the app launcher, and in the app launcher, I'm looking for the bookings app. There it is. Now we're in the bookings app, and we're about to set things up as the owner. A caution here, is Office 365 evolves fairly rapidly, particularly when they launch a new feature. You'll see a lot of changes in the week or two or even the month or two after it's released as they get feedback from end users and adapt it. So we're going to start with, first off, just as an overview, what we have here is as you get again through Office 365 generally, a range of tiles that move you through the steps you have to do. So you can work through the, start, the, the tiles, these are clickable and you can interact with them. What I'm going to suggest is the way that I would work through these to set this up as if you're using it for real. So I'm actually going to start down the bottom here and going to business information. So your first step is to complete your business information. And we can see here I've already completed uh, most of this. So we have a range of information, phone numbers, uh, email addresses, websites, etc. Uh, exchange rates, what type of business you're in. Important for later on is our default business hours. Now, when we set up our staff members, we can have some staff members that are not available on certain days of the week but this is the general hours for the business and this is adjustable to whatever you need it to be. So I've set some defaults up there. As I scroll down, we also have the ability to set up our business logo and upload that. I've already uploaded my logo. I would suggest something, mine's rectangular, square a logo would work better here. So you would upload your logo, uh, you can zoom in and zoom out a little bit with these controls. You can save the end result. 
the save tool is always at the top of the pane or panel or page and so I've completed my business information just checking that I've completed that I can save if I've made some changes I don't like them all the way through you'll see discard so I'm saving my work my next steps are to set up staff members that are going to offer services and then to define the services and then I can allocate staff members to those services. So looking at staff, I've already got a staff member defined here and if necessary I can just click on that staff member to edit them. You can assign a staff member a colour for reference. We can vary their business hours if a particular staff member has other than the standard business hours we can also assign them a level of access and because Stephen Knight myself that account created the calendar I am the administrator now I'm going to discard so I don't wish to keep any changes I may have inadvertently made let's add a new staff member I'll give this person some initials so I have a staff member Dan Matthews I'm going to add some people now it looks through my directory for recently used accounts there's Dan there so I've got Dan uh, I can give Dan a phone number and I can give Dan a level of access I'm going to make Dan a viewer but interestingly if I was working with external consultants I could give give uh, the external consultant a guest level of access so different levels of access depending on who they are so Dan is staff I'll give Dan viewer access but I could give somebody guest access as well uh, now I can also vary particular times maybe Dan's not available on Mondays so we'll flag that as a day off for Dan so Dan's available Tuesday to Friday we can give a color for Dan and we've now set up his details and at this point we can save Dan so we can add external people internal staff as staff to provide our services you may find you need to remove some staff it will want to add in all your existing staff some of which are not going to be applicable for this so you can remove staff who are not involved in service delivery directly now our next step is to define some services so what we're going to do now is add a service again you're probably noticing the geography of this is fairly consistent we're going to do a, a short course here that will add which is uh, Outlook and Time Management and the description of this is using Outlook as a time management tool and in here would be brief points about the course outline objectives other information we might want to provide if it was always offered in a particular venue we could put a default or regularly offered in a particular venue we could put a default location a default time and this is a three hour 30 minute session and we could actually put in a full day version of this as well so there might be a half day session and a full day session there's a buffering option here which allows you to say look people can't book a certain amount of time before or after this to let you get from A to B for example so I might say look after this I am going to need 60 minutes to get from A to B pricing now I can set a particular fixed price an hourly rate the price varies or contact me for further information so in this case I'm going to say call me because I have different contracts with different people there's different prices and you can have additional notes for yourself now where this gets particularly clever is 
we can define a series of emails. Again, as we've seen throughout Office 365, the pencil is your editing tool. You can customize your message to suit uh, the time interval when it's going to be sent out and to who. So I could have a similar message as well as the one going to the customer, going to the staff room, going to the staff member, as a little automatic reminder. Okay, so we've we've set up some automatic messages uh, that go out whenever this particular course is organized. Uh, we can vary the booking settings. Now, these come in a little bit further on in the booking page. So I'm just going to leave this as the default for the moment. Now, we can assign particular staff, and I'm going to say either myself or Dan can run this and save it. So I've now moved up. Before we publish, what we should do is have a quick look at the calendar. What I would recommend is you load up the calendar with existing bookings and time off because they will constrain, as we'll see when we do the client booking part of the process, they will constrain what times and dates clients can actually choose. So you need to make sure any bookings you get through other means get added into the calendar. So what we can see here is we can choose an event and I'll go with our Outlook time management half day. I'm going to use an existing client here. So we've I've used Mary external in another booking and so it remembers all of Mary's details. I can choose when we're going to start the course, which would be nine o'clock because it's three and a half hours. It takes me through to three. Uh, and, and if there's any uh, details, so that's at the customer address. Now, the first time you work with a customer, that information that you've entered will go into the customer record. Uh, and so I could put any additional information there. Uh, and I could say, look, I'm emailing the client separately about the setup for this. Don't use the automatic email confirmation. Uh, but when we do the p process from the perspective of the client, we will see all the emails that actually get sent out. But maybe we've already separately confirmed it uh, as part of uh, the process of organizing this, but it's been done offline. So if I click send uh, now, it's reminded me now, this is very nifty. It's reminded me I need to say who's going to do this job. And I'll say, look, uh, we'll get Dan to do this job. But what that will also do is it puts it in Dan's Outlook calendar as well as being in the booking calendar. Very, very nice. Now I can confirm it. I haven't missed anything. We're good to go. Okay. So we've got multiple events there in the calendar. We're now ready to publish the calendar up to the booking page. So this is my last major step before I can actually make this calendar available. So I've gone to the booking page. I can say, look, let my time be booked in intervals of 15, 30, 60 minutes. So I'm going to go with 60 minutes because an hour is a, about a minimum booking for me. Lead time, uh, where for lead time for bookings and cancellations, I might say 72 uh, hours. And the maximum number of days in advance is, I might say, look, people can book six months in advance. I do want the business to get advised by an email. I do want to allow customers to choose a particular staff member. And I can choose a particular color scheme for the calendar and that I'd like to see a logo on the page. Having configured the available settings, I'm now going to save and publish. That's all that's involved. I've clicked on save and publish. I now, 
I now need to get the word out there that this is actually available. So we have a link. Now you'll notice I've fuzzed my link because I don't want people actually using it just yet. But the link's available uh, and you can email that out to people. So we have tools here. Uh, let me just unpublish. We'll do this again. So I'm now having... In our bookings page, having completed our settings to control the booking process, we're now ready to save and publish. I'll click on Save and Publish. At this point, I would now need to distribute the email address. Now, I'm going to fuzz this email address because I don't actually want people using it just yet. But we can take that email address and email it out to people. We have an email tool here. We can share it via email. We can tweet it to our followers. And particularly, I think, we even more important, we can share this via Facebook. So we can make this page available via, via Facebook for other people to uh, to use, for our customers to use. Also, an interesting little way of distributing your content here, if you have an existing, for example, WordPress uh, site or some other type of site, if I click Embed, I have the embed code to embed it as HTML or to embed it as an iframe in an existing page. So I can distribute uh, the actual booking page by a range of different means. Now, in session two, we're going to experience the process as a customer and actually book a course and see to book a course and see what actual emails and other activity happens. The process of setting up bookings, just to recap, is to create our business information, to add some staff, to record the services that those staff will deliver, and then you can allocate that to staff. You may wish to allocate prices as part of that, to put any pre-existing events in the calendar, including time off, and to then complete the booking page settings, publish, and then distribute the link or embed the code by various different means, Facebook or an iframe or some HTML.